So in today's lesson, we are going to focus on moments of a couple in a two-dimensional space and we'll be taking a couple of examples at the end of the lesson. So what then is a couple? Now a couple is defined as two parallel forces having the same magnitude but opposite direction and are separated by a perpendicular distance d. Now we can describe a couple in this diagram. So let's assume that we have a force F acting this way and then we also have another force negative F also acting that way and then we have a perpendicular distance d which separates the two forces now the magnitude of both forces are the same and they are parallel to each other except that they act opposite to each other so that is why we have one to be a positive value and the other to be a negative value now since they are the same or they have the same magnitude they are parallel to each other only that they are opposite to each other the resultant force here is equal to zero this is because we have fr which is the resultant force to be equal to f plus negative f and then when you add a two you have zero now since the resultant force here is zero the only effect on a couple is to cause a tendency of rotation or better still to rotate and so the moment of a couple is called a couple moment and then it is giving us mc which is the couple moment is equal to the magnitude of one of the forces times the perpendicular distance between the two forces and we have this in newton meter now the direction and sense of the moment of a couple or the couple moment is determined by the right hand rule and a typical example of a couple is the forces that two hands apply to turn a steering wheel. Now these forces are parallel, they are equal, only that they act opposite to each other. Now let's move on as we talk about equivalent couples. So two couples are said to be equivalent if they produce a moment with the same magnitude and direction. So let's assume that we have our first couple with a force F1. And then negative F1, we have the perpendicular distance also to be D1. And then we have the second couple F2. negative f2 and the perpendicular distance d2 now let's try to find the couple moment for each couple so for the first couple we have mc1 to be equal to now we are going to take the clockwise direction so we have f1 times d1 and then for the second couple also taking the moment we are also going to take the clockwise direction so we are going to have f2 times d2 now two couples are said to be equivalent if f1 d1 is equal to f2 d2 now if the values on both sides are equal then it means that they have the same magnitude and if the polarity is also the same then it means that they have the same direction so two couples are said to be equivalent if they produce a moment with the same magnitude and same direction. Quickly, let's move on as we talk about the resultant couple moment. Resultant couple moment. So let's assume that you are given a question where you are asked to find the resultant couple moment. Now, in such a question, you'll be given more than one couple. So let's assume that you are given three couples. You have three couples in the question, and you are asked to find the resultant couple moment. Now, the resultant couple moment, which is given as MCR, is equal to. So first of all, you have the first couple. For the first couple, you have F1 times D1 plus 
f2 times d2 plus f3 times d3. Now, in all cases, for each couple, we are going to consider the direction of the couple moment. So you need to take notice of that. Whenever you want to find the couple moment for each of the couples, you need to take notice of the direction. And so you may end up having some to have positive polarity and others having negative polarity. Now, having understood this, let's try a few examples. So we are going to take the first two questions. Now, for each question, we are going to determine the resultant couple moment acting on 1, the beam, and then 2, the triangular plate. So let's start off with the first one. Now for question 1, we have three couples in here and then we are asked to determine the resultant couple acting on the beam. So we have this to be the first couple, we have this to be the second couple and this to be the third couple. Now, to find the resultant couple moment, we are going to consider all three couples. Now, we also need to define clockwise moment to be positive and anticlockwise moment to be negative. So quickly, let's find the resultant couple moment. Now, in the previous section, we said that the moment of a couple is given as the magnitude of one of the forces times the perpendicular distance between the two forces. So let's start off with this. Now, we are going to use this force, which is 400 newtons, and we know the perpendicular distance between these two forces is 2 meters, and so we are going to move in the anticlockwise direction. We are going to move in the anticlockwise direction, and since we are going to move in the anticlockwise direction, we are going to have a negative value. So, negative 400 times perpendicular distance 2. Next, let's move on to this couple. We have 200 newtons the perpendicular distance is 0.2 meters and so we are going to move in the clockwise direction so that becomes a positive value plus 200 times 0.2 and for the last couple we have the perpendicular distance to be 5 that is 3 plus 2 and then we are going to also move in the clockwise direction in the clockwise direction and so we have plus 300 times 5. Now let's simplify this. So negative 400 times 2, we have negative 800. 200 times 0 0.2, that is 40. Plus 300 times 5, we have 1,500. Let's further simplify. Negative 800 plus 1,500 is 700 plus 40 we have 740 and the unit is newton meter now since we had a positive value at the end it means that the resultant couple moment acts in the clockwise direction so we have mcr to be 740 newton meter acting in the clockwise direction now let's move on to the second one we are going to determine the resultant couple moment acting on the triangular plate here also we have three couples we have this to be the first one the second one and the third one now wherever we see pounds we are going to change to newtons and then wherever we see feet we are going to change to meters so let's try to find the resultant couple moment so that is giving us mcr equals so considering this first couple we have this to be 200 times the perpendicular distance which is 4 and so we are going to move in the anticlockwise direction hence we have a negative value so negative 200 times 4 also for this couple we have 300 here and then the perpendicular distance between the two forces is 4 so also we are going to move in the anticlockwise direction so that's going to be minus 300 times 4 and for the last couple we have this to be the force and this to be the perpendicular distance and so also we are going to move in the anticlockwise direction so if you want to know the direction to take always you need to move in the direction of the perpendicular distance now you know that considering let's say this force the perpendicular distance is here the perpendicular distance is not here and so you can move clockwise 
since the perpendicular distance is here it means you need to move in the anticlockwise direction so that is one way of determining the path of rotation and so here we are going to move in the anticlockwise direction we have negative 150 times perpendicular distance 4 now let's simplify negative 200 times 4 we have negative 800 negative 300 times 4 negative 1200 negative 150 times 4 we have negative 600 so negative 800 minus 1200 minus 600 is negative 2600 we can simplify this as negative 2.6 kilo newton meter because we changed the units from pounds to newtons and then feet to meters so we have negative 2.6 kilo newton meter and because we have the resultant value to be negative it means that the resultant scopal moment is acting in the anticlockwise direction now let's move on as we solve the third question now to question three here we are going to determine the couple moment acting on the beam so we have two forces here and here it will be very difficult to obtain the perpendicular distance between the two forces now this is just one couple and we want to determine the couple moment acting on this beam so what we are going to do is to resolve each of the forces into its x and y components and then based on that we can use that to find the couple moment and so for this force we have this to be 10 kN and then we have a small slope triangle for each of the forces and so we can have this to be fx that is the x component and then we have this to be the y component now how do we find fx and then fy so fx corresponds to 3 for this small slope triangle it corresponds to 3 so it's going to be 3 divided by the hypotenuse which is 5 times the force itself that is 10 kilo newtons and then we have this to be equal to 5 goes here once 5 goes here two times we have 3 times 2 that is 6 kilo newtons also for fy it corresponds to 4 and so you have 4 over 5 times 10 kilo newtons and that is equal to 5 goes here once 5 goes here two times 4 times 2 is 8 so 8 kilo newtons also for the force above we can as well resolve that into its x and y components we have this to be fy and then fx and then literally we are going to obtain the same values so you have fx to be 6 kilo newtons and then fy also to be 8 kilo newtons so how do we determine the couple moment acting on the beam now in the previous section we said that the couple moment is equal to one of the forces or the magnitude of one of the forces times the perpendicular distance between the two forces now if we had the forces acting this way that is acting vertically upwards and then vertically downwards then we are going to multiply the force by the perpendicular distance which is 4 meters now because the perpendicular distance is very difficult to obtain due to how the forces are aligned we are going to consider both the x and the y components of the forces after resolving them into their horizontal and vertical components we are going to use both fx and then fy to determine the couple moment so we have the couple moment to be equal to now the perpendicular distance between fx and then fx is two meters now from this point to point a is one meter and then from this point through to this is another one meter and so in effect we have two meters and so we are going to have fx times 2 now we are going to move in the anticlockwise direction because this is the perpendicular distance so we move in the anticlockwise direction so it's going to be 
negative fx times 2 and then for fy we have this to be fy fy perpendicular distance is 4 meters so so we are going to move in the clockwise direction clockwise direction and so we are going to have plus fy times 4 now let's work out this so we have negative 6 times 2 plus 8 times 4 negative 6 times 2 is negative 12 8 times 4 is 32 so negative 12 plus 32 is 20 and that is 20 kilo newton meter since we have a positive value it means that the couple moment is acting in the clockwise direction so that's it for today's video thanks for watching and see you in my next video bye bye